thank you very much. Um, forgive my voice, it's an octave lower than it would normally be. Uh, not the result of a big night, just a bit of, bit of flu or something, and I'll, this is water. Um, now, wonderful to be with you. And I am part of a group called Recognise a Better Way. And we're campaigning solidly against the referendum and we'll do so right through until October 14 or, or whenever it is. But we are a bit different and I want to applaud uh, Advance Australia, uh, CPAC itself, uh, Quadrant Magazine, uh, The Spectator, all of those people who are helping to give voice against this ridiculous notion of a race-based voice where we'd have one group alone would have collective rights in the Australian Constitution, which would be appalling. Now, recognise a better ways, a little bit different though. We're already thinking of what happens after the referendum, which I'm confident will be defeated, but keep working towards that defeat. We have to think about what language we will use to tackle an Aboriginal industry that keeps about 20% of its own people in penury. 80% of Aboriginal people are doing as well as every other Australian because up until 30 years or so ago, it was not impolite to say integration was the purpose of Aboriginal affairs. But we have been silenced in that. And I want to say to all those on our side of politics, let's say the coalition, that if you don't use the word integration, you don't know where you're going. It's no use simply saying that we want to be practical. Practical to what end? Any teacher, nurse, mechanic can go to, to, remote, to a remote community and do practical stuff. But if you're not trying to get those people either out of that remote community or out of the stupor in which they live or give them the tools to allow them to adapt to life in the modern world, it's just the world we inherited, then you are doing wrong. Being practical is not the answer. You have to do, do practical things in the name of integration. And what does integration look like? It looks like Noel Pearson or Marcia Langton. As Dave Price, Jacinda's dad, has said to me often enough, if you want a voice, learn English. That's your voice. And yet, we have conspired through all sorts of means to keep Aboriginal people out on collective title, outside the economy, being Aboriginal. And I need to tell you that being Aboriginal is not enough. It's not your life. If you sit there outside the economy and playing out the role of an Aboriginal person, you will die young. So I want to read to you uh, parts of a column which I wrote in The Spectator, published yesterday. And it's a note uh, specifically, or well, it includes a note specifically, from a mate of mine from Warburton. Warburton uh, is perhaps the most remote community, the remote place in Australia, it's a discreet Aboriginal community. And uh, this fella has worked in 25 communities throughout Northern Australia, and he runs or has run the local stores. So he has tremendous insights into people's behaviour. So this is the column that I've written about it, and I'll toss in some of his stories. Excuse me. This week, Aboriginal children will walk into the store at Warburton 
in Western Australia and purchase the typical fare of an Aboriginal diet. On the same latitude as the border of Northern Territory and South Australia, Warburton is as remote as it gets. But cake, Coca-Cola and energy bars are all available and expensive. For adults, throw in smokes. These are typical purchases, week in and week out. Eating and drinking junk foods, not working and having no purpose in life other than consumption is a death sentence. And then there's the violence by children, women and men. So my, my mate in Warburton texted me this very recently. Quote, 8 p.m. at night and six-year-olds are wandering the streets throwing fireworks into our and others' yards. Why? Because the six-year-olds today told us to get effed because we were effing white trash seas. Six-year-olds, what hope is there for them? Another text. Another day in paradise. Two women fist fighting and hitting each other over the head with Coke bottles. Roll on my plane on Tuesday, please. And his final text. Shop was open for an hour today before a local man ran in with an iron bar and started smashing the shelves and walls, calling us effing white seas. Close now for the day. We fly out in an hour. Now let me give you a couple of other little stories that this fella has given me even more recently. Um, it's very difficult to get some people to work in the store or indeed anything else. So he hired a bloke just to keep the area outside the store, tables and chairs, clean and tidy. He threw in a bonus, which was a pie and a Coke, standard fare. So the fellow went out, cleaned up, sat down, had his pie and Coke. And when my mate was there looking at him, he threw the empty Coke a can and the paper bag onto the ground. My mate said, what are you doing? And he said, that's white man's. So he drank the Coke and he ate the pie, but the rest is our problem. And it is. We have failed this, these people by forgetting to tell them how it is that coke is made and pies are made and transported and all the rest. So this is so profoundly bad that, believe me, we have a long way back in this regard. Another little story from this fellow, a grandmother. Since the uh, card has been taken away, removed by the Albanese government, there's a woman there who'll wait till just before closing time, step around the corner to go to the cash machine and get out the cash, rush in and buy her, her goods for the day. He asks why. Because if she doesn't rush in at the last moment, she'll be bailed up by her grandchildren and they will rob her for the money. This is as bad as it gets. And yet, we trip along with this notion of a gracious desire for Aboriginal people to have a voice. This is, this is cruel stuff. No voice, no committee, no treaty, no truth-telling, no Makarata can save these people. Aboriginal people are a modern people. In Warburton, Mobile phones are commonplace. Electricity keeps the food and drink cool. Without the paraphernalia of the modern world, there would be no Warburton. It would have closed decades ago. Aboriginal people rely on modern means to survive. Most have no idea how it is made. This is cruel. And yet, too many 
Legal professional associations are for the voice. Medical professional associations are for the voice. The Australian Academy of Science is for the voice. Why is it that these professional associations would cast their lot with an industry that refuses to release its own most vulnerable people into the open society? What is it that keeps these poor souls locked into an ancient and ignorant world? The very antithesis of the professionals, the brilliant and trained minds condemn their objects of concern to a life of ignorance and violence. Not only professionals are being taken for a ride, but shareholders are also being taken for a ride. As are donors, trade unionists, sports fans and taxpayers. Egotistical professional leaders, CEOs, charity leaders, trade union leaders, sports administrators and politicians foolish enough to forsake their duty and send other people's money to the referendum yes case are doing harm. A majority of their members and funders are against this proposition. They are not as foolish as their leaders. Leaders who think that a solution to Aboriginal despair lies in permanent government intervention in the lives of those few Aborigines who are failing in this modern society should think again. It's not all about government. Changing the constitution does not change behaviour. Changing the constitution will not get children to attend school. Changing the constitution will not stop the grog or the abuse or the awful habits that cause early death. The task of leaders is to have every child understand how it is that the mobile phone and electricity makes their food and shelter available. Government may be the provider, but it's never the maker. Government makes nothing. It merely covers the indignity of woeful ignorance. Why do governments refuse to teach their citizens how their lives have been degraded to the point of begging? This referendum proposal is no gracious gift. It is stealing the future of these people. It's an abandonment of leadership. Recognition by the voice is not reconciliation. Aboriginal parents face an awful dilemma. To keep children safe on country, away from the worst of modern life, grog and drugs, but in doing so condemn their children to live restricted lives with poor education, few prospects and a poor diet. The great lie of this referendum is that choices can be avoided. Somehow, 24 select delegates in Canberra will solve the parents' dilemma. They will not. They will continue to mask the choice and, in default, make the choice for them. A slow death on country, rather than to break free, with the help of their families and guidance from outsiders on how to manage their place in the wider world. There is no love for Aborigines in this referendum proposal, just ego. The Aboriginal people at Warburton are radically disabled. They're self-determining all right, sitting on country, speaking language and dying early. And CEOs and the Prime Minister think that this is a good idea. They must do because their solution is to change nothing. Not to learn how to create value, not to adapt, but to wait. Government monies as a permanent way of life are poison. Some thousands of naive supporters of the Yes campaign think it's a good idea. Think again. Emotion 
and faux morality are no substitute for a steely focus on what a person needs to make it in this world. A world not of their making, but one they inherited. Wishing it were otherwise is no substitute for action. Would any leader in the eastern and southern capitals tolerate the behaviour tolerated in Warburton and a hundred other failing communities in northern and western Australia in their backyard? Leaders beware. This referendum has already failed. It has failed to unite Australia. A razor-thin win would be failure. A razor-thin loss would cause resentment. A huge loss, which I believe is in prospect, will create an opportunity to reconsider known paths to success. Leaders, put your ego aside and think, what did it take to raise my child? And you know the answer, mentoring, discipline and love. This referendum disdains all three. Thank you. <clears throat>